All right, let's do some calculus with logarithms. Uh, I am referring to the derivative. Uh, what is the derivative of a logarithm of something or other? All right, derivative of logs. Let's see. Well, uh, let's um, let's just do the uh, log with base a of x. Let's say this is going to be y, and I want to find uh, the derivative dy dx or y prime or whatever you want to call it. All right, uh, I'm going to do this in a slightly weird way. Um, this is actually a thing that you're going to learn more about if you go on to take more uh, calculus. Um, but this is, this is referred to as the implicit derivative. There's one step in here which is going to be a little strange, but you don't have to worry about it if it, if it seems strange to you. This is where the derivative of uh, logarithms come from. We're going to end up with a nice formula. Anyway, what, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. Remember what this means, log base a of x equals y. That means that y is the exponent in a formula like this, a to the y equals x. These are the same as each other. In fact, this is the definition of what the logarithm is. The logarithm of, of x is the exponent which is necessary in order to make a to the y equal x. So that's what it is, all right? But here, we can now take the derivative. So uh, on the left side, it looks like derivative of a to the y. And on the right side, you take the derivative of x and you get 1. All right. Uh, what is the derivative of a to the y? This is actually a formula that we know from last time. Derivative of a to the x is a to the x times ln of x. So this is a to the y times ln of uh, a, right? Did I say it wrong before? The derivative, I'm using this formula. Derivative of a to the x equals a to the x ln of a, right? So just did that right here. Now, uh, it's not x inside the exponent, it's y. That's a little weird. I'm taking the derivative with, with x, but it's a y in there. What you do in that case then is use the chain rule because you have something other than x up here. So we div multiply by the derivative of y, which is dy dx. This is the step which I said before is a little weird. This is, the, this is technically referred to as the implicit derivative. Like I said, not a big deal if this is uh, a little confusing. And one, not zero. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, the whole point of this was we wanted to find the derivative of y, and there it is. dy dx is what we wanted to find, right? So let's solve for dy dx. I'll continue over here. We can solve for dy dx just by dividing that stuff over to that side. So dy dx is one divided by this guy, a to the y ln of a. All right. And this is basically a formula for the derivative of the log base a of x. Uh, only thing that I don't like about this is uh, the y in there, right? Um, I would like the formula to be just in terms of x. If I'm taking the derivative of this function, the answer should be in terms of x. So can I do anything with a to the y to rewrite it in terms of x? Like is a to the y already equal to something in terms of x? You bet it is. a to the y is straight up equal to x. So this says 1 over x ln of a. And this is the formula for the derivative of the logarithm. I'll write that up again. All right, this is our formula. So put this in a box somewhere. You're going to have to memorize this. The derivative of the log base a of x is 1 over x times ln of a. That is the natural log of a. All right. This natural log comes up a lot, right? Even over here, you didn't think you were talking about the natural log at all, but it turns out the uh, derivative involves the natural log after all. Anyway, this is the formula for the log base A of x. What about if it was the natural log actually to begin with over here? Well, then it would say the natural log of x. Remember, ln of x is the same as this, but where the a is equal to e. So I should just use this, but use e instead of a. The answer is 1 over x times ln of e. And what is the natural log of e? Well, this one, you know, I said before, you can't really do values of the natural log um, without using your calculator. But actually, you can do this one, right? This says ln of e means what is the exponent in e to what power equals e? And the answer is 1, right? Because that's what you need to put in there to make this true. So ln of e actually equals 1. And so this, you don't even have to write, it's x times 1 down there. So the formula is derivative ln of x equals 1 over x. How about that? 
That's a pretty awesome formula. Sorry about my squeaks. All right, so you're going to memorize this one too. This one's easy. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. So next time your, your friends ask you, what's so great about the natural log? I kind of like those other logs. You can say this. The natural log has a better formula for the derivative. It's a more convenient kind of a thing. You don't have to have this extra little guy, uh, right? The derivative of the natural log is just 1 over x. All right, let's do a few examples, and then I think that'll do it for us. A few quick little guys here. How about the derivative of log base 7 of x? Well, you use the formula, right? Maybe I'll remind us of the formula. This one is just directly plugging in. The formula is derivative of log base a of x is 1 over x ln a, and then the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, all right? So we're going to use those for all these examples. Anyway, this one is just straight up that. You just use 7 for a, so you get 1 over x times ln of 7, all right? Remember, ln of 7 is a number. If you like, you can plug that into your, type this into your calculator. You will find out what that number is. Uh, how about, what about the derivative of something like this, ln of 3x? Okay, uh, so we're going to use this formula basically, but what about the 3 on the inside here? Um, do you remember what to do when you're taking the derivative of something where inside is got some more fancy stuff plugged in on the inside? The answer is you do the chain rule, all right? So you take the derivative of the outer function, and you leave the same stuff on the inside. So what that means is I'm going to go 1 over the 3x, right? So this is 1 over 3x. Because the derivative of the ln is 1 over whatever, but the thing on the inside was 3x, so it's like that. And now, because of the chain rule, I multiply by the derivative of the inside. And that is 3. Uh, and you can actually simplify this. The 3s can cancel, and the answer is 1 over x. It's a little strange. The derivative of ln of 3x is 1 over x is actually the same as derivative of ln x. It's one of those sort of magical things about the uh, natural logarithm or other logarithms. All right, let's try another one. How about derivative of, uh, this is more complicated, how about log base 4 of x squared plus 1? All right. Again, we're going to have to use the chain rule because I got this weird thing on the inside, but it's a log base 4, so I'm basically going to use this formula here where x is uh, that x squared plus 1, so it's going to be 1 over x squared plus 1 ln of 4, right? Because the a is 4. Got to have those parentheses Haters. because uh, it, it matters. And then, because of the chain rule, I am separately going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And what's the derivative of that stuff? 2x. So that goes out here. All right. If you like, you can make this a single fraction by putting this into the numerator. 2x over x squared plus 1 natural log of 4. That's that. How about this? x times natural log of x. What are we going to do now? Well, the, the uh, ln of x is just that formula right there, but I'm multiplying by x on the front. That actually does complicate things a little bit because I now have two functions multiplied together, right? One being the x, one being the ln of x. What do you do in that case? You do the product rule. So we're going to do the product rule here, and I'm going to say it is the first thing. Maybe I'll, I'll do it down here so I don't run out of space. The first thing, which is x, times the derivative of the second part, which is 1 over x, and then plus the second part, ln of x, times the derivative of the first part, which is 1. All right? And that's it. This is my answer, I guess. x times 1 over x is 1 plus ln of x, you don't have to write times 1. All right, that's the answer. 1 plus ln of x, the product rule, okay? You can also, there are some cases when you need to use the quotient rule, you know, if you have division here, whatever. All right, um, let me just say, there's actually another two versions of these formulas that you will see if you look in our textbook that can be helpful sometimes if you um, like to memorize formulas. I know some people like to memorize things, some people I actually don't like to memorize things, but if you're into that, um, it can be helpful sometimes to remember uh, slightly fancier versions of these. Let's do the second one first. You will see this if you look in your book. What is the derivative of ln of 
g of x, this means you're taking the log of something which is not just x. It's a fancier, more complicated formula inside the parentheses. The answer is you do this with g of x instead of x, but then because of the chain, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So what you get is 1 over x, sorry, 1 over g of x. I just said you do this formula, but use g of x instead of x times g prime of x. That's the chain rule. You are multiplying by the derivative of the inside function. All right. Some people like to remember this formula. You can actually rewrite it this way, g prime of x over g of x, if you like that. All right. So this is another one. I'm not going to say you have to memorize this, but if you like um, this, if you do memorize this one, then you don't have to actually think through what the chain rule is. You just do this, which is basically the chain rule built into it. And then there's another one, a version with this, basically the same as that, but it has an extra ln of a in the denominator. So that one would say the derivative of log base a g of x equals it's this, g prime of x divided by g of x times the natural log of a. All right, so this one, like I said, um, I actually myself don't think about them in this way, but if you like to memorize formulas, you may like this. Um, if, you, uh, if you don't want to remember these, which I don't really, you just do the, remember these formulas and do the chain rule. If you don't like remembering how to do the chain rule every time, you can memorize it this way. All right, one kind of strange thing about the natural log or any of the logs actually um, has to do with uh, the sign of the inside of it. So I'm going to remember just uh, this little rule. Derivative ln x is 1 over x, right? Um, what if I want to do the derivative of ln of negative x? Well, you do this, but you use the chain rule. So the derivative of the log part is 1 over negative x, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is negative x. The derivative of minus x is negative 1. And that actually, the minus sign here can cancel the minus sign down here, and you get 1 over x. Uh, this is somewhat a, of, a, of a, an obscure kind of random fact, but it turns out to be important in some cases. Um, the derivative of log of negative x is the same as the derivative of x. You've got 1 over x both times, all right? Um, what that means is actually it doesn't matter what the sign is on the inside, if it's positive or negative on the inside, you get the same answer regardless. Another way of saying that is this, the derivative of natural log absolute value x is 1 over x, right? It's because what does the absolute value do? It just ignores whatever the sign is. And we already said it doesn't matter what the sign is, so you can just ignore what the sign is. You're going to get 1 over x either way, all right? So this is actually the rule that you will see in, um, in most lists of formulas about derivatives. They will say the derivative of the log of the absolute value x is 1 over x, all right? What it means is whenever you're doing derivatives with logs, you can ignore absolute value signs. This is not just for the natural log. It's also true of the um, other log, you know, log with base a. Absolute value x, and the answer is 1 over x ln a. The moral, of the moral of the story is if you see absolute values inside of a log, you just ignore them, and you put the answer as if there were no absolute values at all. All right, The absolute value does not appear in the answer. You just imagine there were no absolute values at all, and that's what the answer is. So for... Uh, Simple example here, let's try a natural log of absolute value x squared minus 3x. What is it? Uh, and I want the derivative, right? What is that derivative? What I just said is, you just ignore the absolute value signs. You do the derivative as if there were no absolute value signs there. And then that means I go 1 over x squared minus 3x, because that's what the derivative of ln is 1 over whatever. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, because the chain rule, you get 2x minus 3. That's it. No absolute value signs in the answer. If your friends are asking you, what, what, what about the absolute value signs? You say, I'm ignoring the absolute value signs, because that's what you do when you have absolute value signs inside of a log and you're taking the derivative.